stubborn as a mule, mule-headed. Those expressions summarize a lot of people's attitudes about mules. But when you get to Norm Peterson's place up here northwest of Edmonton, Norm, he's the mule man, you find out that, why well, things are a little different. Those are misconceptions, and the real story of mules is a very different one. So how exactly do we get mules? Well, mules a combination between a, a donkey or a jackass and a mare horse. This, uh, this little gal here, she's out of sort of a quarter horse thoroughbred mare and the uh, jack donkey. And she's just, just two years old. She's had one 10 minute session of training so we're going to be working with her. So you got into mules when you were still a, a young man? Oh yeah, yeah. When I was still, still working with my dad. Matter of fact, the first mule I ever rode. I, uh, I was so ashamed. I, uh, my dad had bought a pair of them, and I, I rode every back road I could, hoping nobody would see me that knew me anyhow. That's good. That's a good girl. I don't mind bribing you. It, it buys you a lot of mileage. Kind of nice to have the box say you've done a good job, so that's what we do. So she's lunged a little ways now, and uh, we will just try and set the saddle on her. Okay, great. Okay? Now, has she ever uh, had a saddle on before? She's not. Again, my theory is if you start right, you'll end up right. And I think she was started right. She should probably just let us put it on. If you watch their ears, and I'm, and I'm sure you already know that, they, they tell you a whole lot. And what she's, what she's saying now, I, you know, I know you're there. Uh, be gentle. Don't do nothing stupid because I'll, I'll get you for it. But she's. She's uh, watching. She knows that saddle's there. And now she's saying, well, okay, you can carry on now. I'm, I'm content. So the, the saddle's on. And I had, I had any bit of confidence in her that probably if there was bets made, you could get on her back now. She likes me and, and, uh, and I like her. And uh, that makes it pretty good. So now, which one is this? This one's Twyla. Twyla is a, uh, she's coming six years old. I'm riding her and driving her. She's half, no, that's not true. She's one quarter paint, one quarter Welsh, and half donkey, of course. <laughs> She's not a mean mule. She's a, she's a nice mule. She wants to please. She's just learning how to please. And she's, uh, she's really, really bright. She's attentive. And uh, she's quick. Mules are tremendous body language readers. So I tried my hand at taking Twyla through a little training to read my unskilled body language. And we did pretty That's well. Better. Okay. Well, that was good. <laughs> we did all right. I'm gonna get me a mule. She likes working for you. Maybe I you better can give compliment her. Huh? Okay. Sure. Good girl. Good girl. That's really important to develop a rapport with it with a mule. You know, whether it's yeah. the first time you use them or if you're gonna have them a lifetime. Yeah. They uh, they won't forget you. You can come back here tomorrow and, and she'll know you. Yeah. <laughs> now you've definitely won over and I've lost out. Yeah, that's it. She's my mule now. She's your mule. <laughs>
their eyes are set so they can watch their feet. They're, they're very good at setting their feet down the right way. Okay, Dave, you're going to get on and go for a ride, eh? Oh, sure. Okay. New man on board, Twyla. Treat him nice. I'm impressed with these fun, lovable animals. Plus, they're a great ride. Stay tuned. When we return, we'll travel 200 miles to reunite Norm with an old mule friend. Now you hear that expression, stubborn as a mule? Untrue. Untrue. Well, Norm, it's been a while, but here's a chance for you to get back together with an old friend, Sage. Yeah, it's about two years, almost two years. Yeah, she hasn't, she hasn't forgotten, I don't think. Oh, no, I don't think so. Even, uh, Sage, we got your favorite treat for you. Of course, she, she likes this. Now, she, she'd, uh, she, she'd probably like it from you as well, but uh, she'll, she'll take him anywhere she can get him. <laughs> yeah, that's something she hasn't forgotten either. No. She's uh, she's she's not really cuddly. She's she's a nice, quiet, gentle mule. But uh, she, when she's got a job to do, she likes to really get up and do it. Now tell us a little bit about the relationship between you and this mule. How it how it started. She was born on our ranch up uh, north of Edmonton, northwest of Edmonton. We uh, we raised her right from day one. Trained her. We taught her to drive, to ride. We worked cattle with her. Now, what were some of the things that you and Sage did do together in terms of shows and? Well, one thing that she done is uh, she was the first mule ever to show at Spruce Meadows. That was oh, seven years ago, I think. She won there and she competed in the Battle of the Breeds and she come away with a ribbon. Then she was hauled all the way to win them up in Nevada. She went into nine different events down there. I think we come out with five ribbons and some cash. So she done very well. She made her made, made us pretty proud of her. In, in her life, she she beat a lot of good horses at different shows. Mind you, she lost a few shows, but we don't talk about that. So let's talk about her mind and, and the fact that she is intelligent. Why? What 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 does she do that makes her uh, appear to be more intelligent than other people? I guess she just wants to learn. She wants to please, and uh, she's done almost everything. I when she was still ours, I broke a lot of colts with her, taught a lot of colts to both ride and drive. You could hook up a pretty rattly colt with her on a sleigh or a wagon, and Sage would just drag that colt around, teach him how it was done. She'd, uh, she had such a good mind, she could settle another animal, it seemed like. One animal sort of copies the other one, and she could, she could settle that animal right down and uh, teach him the proper way to do it. And it looks like she remembers you after all Yeah, this she time. does, yeah. And of course, the mule man not only believes they have great memories, but that mules have other advantages over horses. They're uh, very, very low maintenance. If you notice her feet, she's got good black hoofs, they're tough. They don't need trimming as often as a horse. The animal himself, they're not prone for, for disease. They don't pick up every cough and cold like an ordinary equine. Well, that's what I've found and talked to a lot of people that I think that very true. They're uh, very easy keepers, take very, very little feed. In fact, one of the problems with the mule is feeding them too much. Flies doesn't uh, have the same effect on them as it does on other equines. If you've ever watched a donkey or mule roll, they put their heart and soul into it. They get buried down in the dirt. Their tail is going continuously. The only place a mule can't scratch or a donkey, and that's if you want to really get to their heart. And the shortest way to a mule's heart is through their ears. And if you get scratched in their ears, like you can you can put them to sleep. They just uh, they love it, and uh, that's that's the shortcut to their heart. It's not through their stomach.
It was quite a sight to see Norm and Sage work together again. It's plain to see that they had a special bond between them. How does it feel to be back on Sage after all this time? Pretty powerful compared to that toy I got at home. Yeah, a lot of, there's a lot of power underneath there. Ooh, and uh, she probably, she kind of enjoys it. She says it'll probably be a relief to get that guy off me and just go back to walking up and down the hills again. Kind of fun. Because of the important role mules played during the Second World War, carrying ammunition and supplies to Canadian troops, the Canadian government passed a law making mules protected animals. And that law is still on the books today. Well, after spending some time myself with these very special animals, I think I, too, just might become a mule man. You kidding? set the pacing world on fire and be crowned the pacing machine. They're all chasing Cam Fella, the pacing machine. This is Cam Fella. Born in 1979, Cam Fella's life started in the heart of bluegrass country at the Walnut Hall Stud Farm by the stallion Happy Fella and out of mare Nan Cam by Brent Hanover. The 151 Bay Colt was noticed after his 1981 racing season by trainer Pat Crow, scouting for a horse for Norm Faulkner and Norm Clements of Ontario, Canada. The two Norms liked what they saw and purchased the Bay Colt for $140,000. The rest is pacing legend. That was $140,000. That was a lot, I think, at that time for a standard bred. But they could see the potential in him and Pat Crow was, was very impressed with him. In his four-year career, Cam won 28 consecutive races, setting a new pacing record, including the Canadian Pacing Derby, the American National, U.S. Pacing Championship, and the World Cup. Cam was also voted Standard Bred Horse of the Year in 1982, and again in 1983. He held seven track records and was inducted into both the Canadian and U.S. Harness Racing Halls of Fame. In his final start, he would surpass all who came before, retiring in 1983 the richest standard bred in history, with earnings just over $2 million and having won 61 out of 80 starts. On the outside, Cam Bella, 28 straight, 157 and 2. What was his secret? I think it was heart drive and smart all together. Um, Cam didn't like to give up, and um, in fact, he had a rival called It's Fritz, was another horse. And uh, one race that he was in with It's Fritz, it was really, it was gonna be a really, like the race of the decade kind of thing between these two. Everybody was looking forward to that race. And Cam led almost the whole race. And then It's Fritz pulled in front of him and started to pull away. And all of a sudden, Cam just kicked something in gear. We don't, you know, nobody knows where it came from, but he left its foot standing still and went past him. And they said that uh, something about when he passed its Fritz and he looked at its Fritz in the eye, um, they said that its Fritz never won another race after that. But where Cam Fella's real legendary status comes in is after his phenomenal racing career was over. It seems that he passed on. Uh, just about every one of his good characteristics to all of his offspring. And he's had uh, quite a few that have been um, millionaires. Mr. Clements said that he has about 1,200 offspring. In his 14 years in stud, this 15-1 bay sired 13 crops of foals that have earned in excess of $80 million and he sired 13 millionaires more than any other stallion, making him the siring king of the pacing world. He was the pacing machine. That was uh, giving him 
uh, at one, the end of one of his races by the track announcer, and that stuck. So he was known as the pacing machine throughout his career. And then after he started his siring, they called him the siring king. Cam Fellow was retired from stud in 1997 and now resides at the Kentucky Horse Park in Lexington, Kentucky. Cam Fella, the pacing machine, the siring king, and an undisputable living legend. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, is commonly known as heaves. Heaves is an allergic respiratory condition with many similarities to human asthma. Clinical signs commonly associated with heaves are an increase in respiration rate and an expiratory excursion or lift that occurs at the end of the expiratory phase. In advanced cases, a heave line will develop due to an accentuation of the abdominal musculature required for expiration. An additional sign is a dry, unproductive cough that occurs either during exercise or while the horse is eating. Minimizing your horse's exposure to dust in the barn, providing him with plenty of fresh air, along with good quality feed products that are free from dust and molds, will go a long way into the prevention of heaves in your horse. Hi, I'm Linda Tellington-Jones, and if you want to keep in touch with your horses, keep watching this great program, The Complete Rider. Complete Rider Letters. Linda Jensen from Auckland, New Zealand has asked Jeanette, can you please share some of your secrets for improving the overall health of my horses? Let's see what Jeanette has to say. There are no secrets to good horse raising. There's only hard work and common sense. Our program starts from a basis of good pasture and big pastures like you see out there. They have, we have good grass and lots of room to exercise. The program increases with good quality forage, good quality concentrates. A few of the things that I found have helped me over the years include for my brood mares a chelated mineral that uh, the chelation increases the absorption of the mineral and therefore helps make sure we don't have any OCD or epiphysitis problems. For feet, I like to use MSM. It uh, really does increase foot growth and can help improve quality of the foot as well as quantity of foot. For the old arthritic joints, glucosamine has been a big help in liberating up their joints and making them move better and feel better. For the horse, it's a little uh, questionable in disposition, a little nervous type of horse, uh, adding extra B vitamins to the ration in the form of brewer's yeast has been effective for me. I also like to add oil, a couple of tablespoons of vegetable oil, four coats to get show coat sheen, and I'll also add up to a cup of oil to feed when I'm trying to fatten a horse. And the last thing that I've used that seems to help quite a bit is using vinegar, a tablespoon of vinegar in their feet a day, aids in fly control. I hope that answers your questions. There really are no secrets, merely hard work and common sense. For The Complete Rider, this is Jeanette Coote. <laughs>